and let's get ourselves a new piece of paper. New, right, we're yeah. all starting new. New. If you plan on framing this someday, eight by 10 is a more common size than eight and a half by 11, but I don't plan on framing mine, so I'm just gonna leave it at 11 wide by eight and a half high. 200 is plenty to do it on a home printer. And if you're not going to enlarge it to poster size, 200 is fine. If you think someday I might enlarge this to poster size, you might want to do 350. But again, I'm just going to leave it at 200. The bigger the number, the bigger the file, the harder it is for your computer to do things. That's how I like to think about it. So backgrounds, urban backgrounds, the biggest difference is going to be our dreaded perspective. But I'm going to hopefully show you a way to not think so much about the vanishing point and all the lines and stuff like that, but about your character, because this is really about your character. So the first thing we need is a character. We're going to go ahead and spend maybe the first 15 minutes of class just going uh, with our, our character drawing. Whoops, not with an airbrush. This could be one of your D&D characters. This could be a character you make up right now. This could be a character version of yourself. We just need a whole body kind of just standing there. So we're basically gonna use them as a yardstick, a measuring tool so that we'll know how big to make the chairs and the door and everything else in relation to the character. So are you using a pencil right there? Yep, I'm using pen? a pencil right now because I like how it can go soft and dark depending on pressure. If you don't care about those things, you can use a pen. Since I sketch a lot of plot lines, I usually like to be able to have them go lighter and darker as I need them. Doesn't have to be your most beautiful drawing, but we do want it clear enough that you can tell where are all the body parts. If you're not quite sure where the elbows are, you're not gonna be able to measure anything to the elbows. And proportions are also up to you. If you want to make them chibi proportions, that's fine. If you want to make them Gravity Falls style, that's fine. Kermit the Frog certainly has different proportions than a human being. I'm going to go with just generic stylized human. And again, we're going to be working on these until 515, maybe a little longer if we get there and nobody has any feet yet. Every once in a while, you can use this little button here to flip your drawing or mirror it. 
and it will show you the horrors that is no actually this one's okay sometimes i flip it and it looks like i drew it with my left hand or something non-dominant hand it's so crazy out of whack There's something about mirroring that will just show you which parts are too wide or too skinny. I finally saw the second Hobbit movie. Oh, really? Can't say I liked it better than Lord of the Rings. Lord too of the Rings long. is still my favorite. It's just too long, and Legolas was kind of a jerk in this one. Not really gonna lie. <laughs> I know my mom has made me watch all of the Lord of the Rings movies with her, and they all kind of just blur. They so definitely I definitely do. This is the one with the dragon that talks so much. Oh yeah, that guy. I mean, props to uh, Cumberbatch. Oh yeah, have you ever seen like the those vids where he's just in like the the suit, the mocap suit? No, I haven't, but I bet that is a scream. Yeah, it's very funny. It's kind of fun. We're looking about two more minutes, or do we want five more minutes? No. All right. We'll do we want to work minutes. on that. The real thing. Absolutely. I'm having fun with this. It's nice to just draw sometimes. Not have to worry about, am I using the proper shape language? Am I blah, blah, blah? Nah, just draw a character. It's fine. I'm drawing a scene. Oh, there you go. Getting ahead of us. Or like the beginnings of a scene I need. What's it called when there's a shot where it's like, um, like you're like uh, when you're looking at a picture, but the picture is looking into the mirror and like the mirror is showing off every everything that's happening. But it has an actual name. Usually the shots are defined by how much of the person you can see. Oh. Like medium shot, full shot. Yeah, because I know I've seen like tons of shots like this before. I mean, they might have a name for it. If they do, I don't know what it is. We'll call it the mirror shot. Let's look at what mirror shot gets me. Hey, have you guys noticed a, a, a glitch with google or sometimes when you when you google something it goes to bing instead oh i've never had that i don't know i tried what? fixing it but then but like the instructions weren't very clear on on like where in the window i should click mm -hmm. and i and i you know i wasn't in the mood to like troubleshoot at the moment this is true what um, browser are you using? Uh, Chrome. Google Chrome. Yeah, I think Google would protect you from Bing. <laughs> yeah. Okie dokie, 515. So I've got my character in a white void. 
Mostly people taking pictures of selfies. People taking selfies in in window and mirrors. That's true. Yeah, I've seen that a lot. This character don't have a phone. So yeah, so like the entire thing is supposed to be framed by this mirror. So so it'll have a little frame, and a limit to myself. Absolutely, borders are great. Whoops. That's one thing I don't like about Fire Alpaca. Whenever I'm transforming and I want to make something bigger, if it gets cropped off the canvas, it gets cropped off for life. Yes, it's <laughs> irritating. Why? Why? It is. Yeah. I'm going to name my layer character just so I know what it is, and then make a new layer and call this one props. So most of the time, perspective doesn't actually have to follow a vanishing point. What? Shocks? Because the vanishing point would mean every single thing is so perfectly aligned, which cannot happen in real life. Nobody has their desk completely parallel to the wall, etc. So we don't have to worry about that. Woohoo! What we are looking at is the proportion. So for instance, if I'm drawing this lady's door to this room. I'm holding down shift to get the line and I go, okay, here's my door. It's a little wonky looking. It's not very believable. And that's mostly because of the proportion. We don't normally see doors this wide compared to a person. So instead, if we make the door a little more closer to the proportion we see in real life, whoops, I gotta make a mark here. And I'm just recalling when I walk through a door, it's a little bit higher than my head. Not that much bigger than my body. Doorknob, I don't have to reach up that much to grab it, so maybe it's there we'll get something that is way more believable. Same thing with a chair or a desk. If we make a chair that has proportions something like this, well, that's a little kitty's chair. There's no way she's gonna be able to sit in it. Just judging from the chair I'm sitting in right now, my legs are comfortably at a 90 degree angle. So I can tell that from her knees, a chair seat would be that tall. I can judge from just leaning back in my chair, the headrest is going from about the back of my head down to my seat. So I know that the back of the chair would be about that long compared to my character. And since we're in digital land, it's super easy to just take that measurement and move it to the chair. I know I ran out of room here, but move it to the chair so that I would know how tall to make the back of that chair compared to my character. That's the big key thing there, compared to your character. Because if you watch Incredibles anytime soon and he goes to Edna's house, one of the things you notice is everything's built to her scale. Yeah, stairs are really tiny. The chairs are really short. And so Mrs. Incredible has has her legs kind of going in grasshopper style because she's sitting on this little chair like that. So proportion is pretty much everything when it comes to making it look like your character is in that space. So with that in mind, we need to decide what kind of background are we going to do? Where is our character? going to be. We could do a bedroom, kitchen, study, cafe. Oh, I know where my character is. Let's hear it. She's in the bathroom. Bathroom. Absolutely can do a bathroom. Want to want to see what I've done so far? Sure. Let me stop my share so you can share yours. Oh, I remember oh, you telling energy. me about this idea. <laughs> With yeah. the unicorn watching her. 
a little spooky. I imagine this is kind of like one of those things, you know, a magical girl, like their little animal slide. You could go, hey, there's a monster attacking the city. Come on, let's go. That's kind yeah. of what I imagine. <laughs> That's going to be cute. Yeah, yeah, I kind of want to do like, you know, maybe like there's a few toothpick brushes here or something. Something if, at first I wasn't super, super sure about this because one thing it's like in mirror shots often it's like, oh, my thing froze. Hold on. It's probably uh, automatic save. Oh, you need to take this? No, thank you. It's not going to be any good if you wait anymore and watch throw it away. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll do it in a minute. You want to leave it? Okay. Yes or no? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. No worries. That's okay. I'm say sorry. hi to your mom for us. <laughs> sorry, but they say hi. Um, yeah, so um, anyway, I was un bye guys. Bye guys. <laughs> I was I was unsure about this originally because because uh, usually when you do mirror shots like this, the person is in the middle. And part of me thought about like um my uncle has like a special cabinet where it's like the mirror opens, and I don't know, maybe oh, yeah. Maybe that, but um, do you know what? This also might be good. Yeah, honestly, I think it would be fine because it's like off center is better. Yeah, I, I would think it would be better than to have the face smack dab in the middle. I think your gut instinct was good. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, thanks. You're welcome. Now I've got to go eat a sandwich before it goes bad. All I'll right. <laughs> Get off, you go. off you go. Still here. Right. No problem. Go ahead and eat your sandwich. So once I decide what kind of room she's going to be in, let's say it's her study. I like to give myself some notes so I remember what I'm doing. So in a study, probably going to have a desk. Probably going to have a chair. Probably going to have a lamp or a desk lamp. Probably going to be a window somewhere. Depending on how techie she is, might have a computer. Probably not because I don't want to draw one. <laughs> uh, let's see what else. A book. book around if she's not going to have a book, yes. she should have a book. She'll have a book, maybe even a bookcase. Stuff on the desk, pencil and paper. Stuff on the desk. Computer. Yeah. Pencil, pencil cups, sharpener, all the things you can think of. This is the brain storming stage what else uh, da, 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 da. picture on the wall maybe your cell phone picture on the wall so you give yourself lots of ideas plant plant, plant. yes gotta so have a, could plant. Be a hanging plant that'd be cool could be a hanging plant i gotta look around <laughs> <laughs> waste basket Rug, waste paste for basket. Wow, Extra that's our chair. Hard. Extra chair, stack of papers. Oops, extra chair. File stack cabinet. Papers. File cabinet. Papers. File cabinet. The best thing about this is your list is filled the paper. You can't draw anything. That's right. Yeah, but it's also nice that you know it's on a on a different layer. So, whoops, it's not on a different layer. Let's whoops. separate that. <laughs> Oops. Get my character off. Turn that one to character. Turn this one to list. Cool. So there's lots of stuff we can draw. Next thing I'm going to do is decide my setup, my, my thumbnail. Go thumbnail. This is where we decide we want to see a corner of the room or just one wall of the room. So basically when you're doing your thumbnail, here's my paper, I can decide if I want to see one wall in the back and then we'll have, you know, ceiling floor, floor ceiling. Or do I want to see a corner of the room? Just to make it clear, let's say here's a window. There's a window. Did 
The only difference between these two is this one gets to have straight lines up and down. This one only gets straight lines up and down, but not side to side. Most of the time, it looks more natural to have this one, but this one's good too. I'm gonna to go ahead and say that we're gonna go ahead and start with this one just because there's less diagonal lines to worry about. So let's do that. I'm going to turn off that layer and start sketching, sketch layer, back it up. So I'm going to decide my back wall. How big is my back wall going to be on my paper? You can ignore your character for right now. We don't need her yet. There's my back wall. And because it's digital, you can move it around, which is great. Oh yeah. Basically, you just have to decide at this point, do you want a lot of floor space so you can see the carpet? Or do you want more ceiling space so that you can see the light fixtures and the fan? Or do you want to stick it in the middle so you got a little bit of both? I think I'm going to put a little more floor than ceiling. And then I'm just going to lightly draw an X through the corners. that I get my first angles in place. And these are really the only angles we need. We don't have to do the horizon line and the vanishing point and the blah, blah, blah. We're just gonna work off of these angles here. Thinking back to story art, we need a person. That's the character that we've just drawn. We need a place, we've got that. We're gonna make a study. And what are they doing? I'm gonna say, stuck in a phone call meeting, not happy about it. But that will give me some emotional contact. Oops, I did it on the wrong layer again. Back up, back up, back up. That'll give me some context on what she's gonna be feeling, what she's gonna be posed like and what I need to see. So I need to see her at her desk. I'm going to plot out the floor space of where I want the desk to be. So I'm just following that line there. I'm gonna follow this line here. Follow that line there. And then the same one across the front. That's the floor space that it takes. Now I'm gonna grab my character, scale her to the room. So I'm just gonna imagine she's right up, whoop, right up against the back wall. She kind of seems to me just looking at her, she seems like she's a little short. Yeah, she could probably be a little short. So maybe she's like that. She's standing right up against the back wall. Let's say that's how tall she is. So I'm gonna drag, whoops, not drag. Oh man, that room has low ceilings then. No, cause if she's like five foot, that'd probably yeah, be like an foot eight ceilings. foot. That's, that's sort of. Kind of typical. If you want it to be an even bigger space, we can make her smaller. No, it doesn't have to be, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. I'm going to leave her here just so that's a little easier to see what's going on. Yeah. Uh, so we know if I put her right on this X and I duplicate the layer. So now I have two of her and I want her to move closer to the camera. I just enlarge her. And wherever that X is passing through the character there, it's gonna pass through her on this one too. So I'm not gonna line up the feet with that X. I'm gonna line up the, the chest, chest section, like her necklace, and then just move her off to the side. So there she is if she was standing there. 
I'm going to do it one more time just so that I have kind of near, middle, and far. Control T again, make her kind of medium height, get her necklace set up. And there she is standing there. Now oh, I'm going to label cute. these. I'm going to label these mid distance. Yeah. Again, this is something you really only do in digital. There's no way I would do this if I were drawing <laughs> in real life. But that's that's the bonus of doing digital. This is distance, this is the far. So I know I've got my close distance, my middle distance, my far distance. Should I pause there while you guys get your characters set up? I've departed from digital and I'm taking notes now. No problem. <laughs> I will just keep on, keep on keep, keeping on. Keep rolling. <laughs> All right. So now I can do what I was doing earlier where I was measuring, okay, how tall is she compared to her desk? I'm at a desk right now. If I stand up, I see that it is below my hips about a hand's width. I don't have to get that technical. I'm just describing it to you guys. So this desk then, if I bring it up, it hits me about right there when I stand up. So now I know this desk, I'm working from the back corner here. This desk is going to be that tall. I might color it in just so that we can kind of see what's going on here. Oh, hey, I'm good. I'm going to leave for a minute. Be right back. No problems. So there's the back side of the desk. I need also the front side of the desk. How tall is it gonna be? How, how tall do I think it should be? I don't know. Actually, I do know. We're just gonna take that line. Plop it in there. Oh yeah. There's that back corner. I'm gonna take that line, that diagonal line, bring it forward, plop it in there. So now I have the box that makes up the size of the desk. Although in reality, that desk line wouldn't be pot. It wouldn't be quite parallel with the floor. It would start. To, it would start to level out a little but bit. Not yeah. Too much. So we'll, we'll not have to get away with that. Yeah. Like I say, if the proportion is right, you can get away with more of those inconsistencies than if it's, you know, kind of a weird proportion. Like if I had made it a cube. Yeah. Then, yeah, it's, it's definitely going to be more visible. And then oh, check. All right, chair. I was talking about the chair is about the distance from shoulder to groin. So I can take that off of my mid distance one and I will know that that's how tall the chair back is. And I know that the chair seat is right above the knee. So if I had a chair, there would be the seat. I can take that same distance, throw it on there. And I know that her chair would be or her chair back would be that, unless she's got one of those like mega tall chairs to be more important looking. That's where you start looking for reference. But you can always double check by moving her down there and go, okay, if she's sitting on there, look at that. Hits her right at the back of the shoulders. Maybe she's got one of those office chairs that has a headrest. My first thought is like she's on, she's in like a, one of those buildings where the back wall is just a giant window into the city. Ooh, good idea. I like that. <laughs> this could be a giant window into the city. Put a little skyline back there. You could even give her a corner office. We could give her a corner office. We could make this a window too. Yeah, see that lot on TV. There's more buildings over there. Oh, we're getting somewhere. And we had so many things on our list. Hanging plants. Let's go for that. She has a plant on the ceiling, hangs down into one of those little net basket things, maybe a spider plant. But it hangs out. Yeah, one thing to remember, that little X thingy, anything above it is going to curve up. If she has a waste paper basket down here, it'll curve down because it's beneath that point. Let's say she has that bookcase over here. I'm going to move these guys over so we can draw. 
And you're explaining this way better than my how to draw books did, or at least I tried. Just, just use your character. Your character is the one that lives here and just makes sense to me. Yeah, you know, uh, they, they mm -hmm. even like t talked about this as a, like, you know, as a thing, use your character or whatever, but I don't know, maybe just like, like there's a difference between reading it and hearing it, like, and also happens That's to true. Be. Yeah, all those still pictures, they don't quite work the same way as a live demo. Yeah. So there's a side of my bookcase. Here's the number one problem that you will see people do. They're going to draw this bookcase. Yeah. And they're going to make it long, like a limousine. And they're going to go, here's all the books inside. But really, most bookcases are taller than they are wide. So it's more likely that this bookcase is only about that deep. Or if you're going for more, like a more modern thing, you could just like give her like, have you seen those like modern minimalistic shelves where they're just like a plank of wood on your wall? Oh, yeah. absolutely. You can do those too, yeah. If I put a plant up here, it's above the X, so I know that has to curve up. Little aloe plant up there. And what else? Carpet. If I'm doing a carpet, I got to find those diagonals or that rug. Let's say I'm doing some kind of rug. That goes there. Let's say we need another chair for if somebody comes to visit her. Well, then I'm going to need to use my close one for measurement. Oops, I keep grabbing the wrong layer there. Let's say there's a chair off to the side here. Let's get another color. Hits are about at the knees, so that's where the seat is going to be. Remember when to keep it narrow, it's not a huge long chair. So that's where the seat would be. How big is the back gonna be? About mid shoulder to groin. So it's gonna be that. Oops, I should've done it on a different layer so I could move it. And we can just move it over here and we go, yep, that's how tall the chair is. it's one of those desk chairs with the wheels on the bottom we just make an x or if it has six you put in one more line there what else do we have stuff on the desk let's say there's a computer well i know we have to have a top sides bottom and now it has to be deep so I check out my diagonal lines. It's very close to the X, so it's going to be super, super short. Not deep at all. Whoops, let me clean up my lines so we can just see the silhouette. We're looking at that diagonal straight, diagonal over here. We can have a stack of papers over here following those diagonals. What else do we have? Window lamp, oh, lamp. It's one of those banker's lamps that has like the green shade. This is where you go look for a lamp model. Just off my memory, it has something, something like this, a base, little pull string as an electrical cord. Uh, that seems like kind of a lot of stuff. I think we could start putting our character actually in now. So I'm going to take Wait. her away. Betsy, quick question. What's a vector mm -hmm. layer? Vector layer is a layer where you don't have pixels. You have a guideline. They call it a path. You have a path, and that path can get stroked. What that means is, if you shrink your artwork, the line won't shrink with it. You can control the width of the line no matter how big or small you make your shape. Huh. It's kind of rad, but it's also, also no jaggies. No jagged pixels, no no stuff like that. You can make it as big as a, a mountain and no jaggies. It's pretty great. 
So I've got my sketch pretty much figured out, but I said the story is that she's on the phone on a long, long meeting, she doesn't wanna be. So now we get to put in our character and do the acting, the actual storytelling. So first thing I'm gonna do is have her slouching, holding her phone, elbow on the desk. If I'm not sure how big to draw her head, I can always double check. Oh, yep, I'm drawing her too big. Gotta take it down a notch. See which layer is she on. This is why I should have named my layers. Layer seven? No. Well, layer seven can merge down with the sketch, that's for sure. Oh, oh, hey guys. Mm -hmm. Hey, I, I wanna play a fun game right now. Hey, I, I Googled themed bathroom ideas and I want you to guess what's like, what item is on the third row? like like one like guess what kind of theme is like right up on bathroom theme ideas just random absolutely right after i get my character in here okay yeah sorry just just this is so shocking to me that i that, that's like one of those things i want to say <laughs> you need to get some some other other feedback other opinions out so we I can love check. to give feedback yeah <laughs> i can check my character's head size yeah. So that I know it fits with everything. And holding the phone, tilting over, tilted posture, other arm on the desk, rolling eyes. How long is this going to take? Maybe on the phone with uh, customer service, tech support. Yeah, tech support. <laughs> Get your character in here. Get that one out of the way. And even though it's a super, super loose sketch, everything is in proportion. Everything looks like it fits. Everything, if it were brought to a greater level of detail, would be pretty believable as far as they all belong in the same room, same world, and the character actually uses this stuff. I think I might put a vent or something on the ceiling, maybe a ceiling fan. I don't know how many offices have ceiling fans, but you always see them in the detectives. Oh, all right, there you go. Just something, something up there. All right, let's take a look at Makila's thing. I'm gonna save that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, what's this game now? I want you to guess like one of, what's one of the first ideas Google gives me when I search. Yeah. All right, sharing my screen. First, I gotta look for some stuff. So let's look for whoops, not shopping. Let's go to images. Ooh, look at all those cool desks. Right, gotta find some kind of neat desk. A draw. I kind of wish they'd show the other side. I don't want to show the opening. I want to show the other side. Uh, what do they call them? Executive desk? Is that the one that has it decorated on both sides? Well, Google knows what I mean. There we go. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not my same angle, but that's okay. I'm just getting the ideas off of it. I'm going to paste it in the corner. And since I have so many layers, I'm going to make a folder and put this as all my sketches. Put everything yep, yep, in there. Oh, these are cute. And get my desk reference up at the top so that it doesn't get covered by anything. All right, close that. Desk. So I've got some extra wood at the base and then some extra at the top. I'm going to lighten up my sketches. They don't get in the way as much. Grab a pen. 
grab black, maybe 10. And maybe a little bit thick. But that's all right, I'll roll with it. And that lifted part in the middle, and a kind of a thick portion on top, too. So one by one, we just add in each section, each detail. Let's get my waffle grid on so I can draw straighter lines. I didn't realize faucet extenders were a thing. Faucet extender? Faucet extender. Huh. It gives you you put on like the like bathroom faucet. Well, what do you know? Does it have like a hose so that you can? No, it's like it's Extend like it a rubber way? ducky head you stick on your bathroom. Faucet. Oh, funny! I get it. I get it. <laughs> this would have been a, a great place to draw half of the desk. Oh, yeah, there. we could have duplicated it or we could have used the symmetry brush. Oh, yeah, that would have worked. That would have worked. I just didn't think of it. Uh oh, I drew on the wrong layer. Whoopsie daisy. The nightmare of all digital artists. And it probably happens 50 times a day. Yeah. <laughs> Ruler. I have to grab my own phone and figure out how you position it. <laughs> well, it has to come near the mouth, so that has to stick out. And then my thumb is hitting me in the jaw, so it's probably back there little finger wrapped around. Oh, look at that. Sometimes you just got to do it yourself and figure out where everything goes. 
Oh, I found out how to turn on symmetry. That's fun. Yeah, I like symmetry brushes. I mean, they're not always um, natural looking, let's say. Like you can usually spot when somebody's used a symmetry brush, but they're pretty fun. Not even a brush, it's like a, it's like a ruler. Oh, a ruler. Okay, so how come you could erase the desk when you were on that character? I had to switch the layers. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, that looked magic to me. <laughs> I had to switch the layers real quick. Desk, erase, and go back. This arm got a little chubby though, so try it again. Yeah, better. And she had her necklace. And then and some kind of crazy haircut. Let's see. Let's open up my characters here. Office chair. Let's take a look at what we got for office chairs. Oh, maybe one of those big padded ones. handles how am I gonna or arm rests I mean arm handles <laughs> to figure out where they are again I'm just sitting in my own chair and I can feel that my elbows just about touch the arm rests I'm gonna stick an arm rest in there right by the elbow Wow. <laughs> Already got the desk looking pretty good and the chair. Let's go ahead and put her in the room real quick. Oh, it's a little thick though. Let's take this down to like five. And add 
out of the way so that I can see Whoop. my ceiling. I should get that one back on so it'll be straight. Oh, I'm here, do that bookcase, do that window. Do this window. But that's just a sticker. Remember we have to go in here and because it's below the X, I can see the top of this edge. I'll be able to see this edge of the window. And then I get up to the top here and turn that off, make my start point, hold shift. Pop that line in there and let's take a look at it. Oh, getting there. Whoops, I missed one. Oh, that's because the uh, bookcase covers it up. And normally this would be where you would go, oh gosh, where's my vanishing point? I gotta find my vanishing point. Nah, just like pretty much match. Close the, enough. Yeah, close enough. Whoops. To just match the diagonal above it. Maybe a little tiny four in there. Yeah, get in there. You just have to remember that curves get curvier as they go more up the page. Probably not that curvy though. A little flatter on the bottom. I don't really know what those are, but I know my sister's made one. I think it's a macrame. Oh yeah. Macrame plant, whoops, plant hanger, there you go. What do they look like? This is the life of an artist. What does it look like? And then you find it and you go, okay, it looks something like that. Little zigzag around the pot. Got it. So I go back to my thing. Might need a sketch layer. Put a zigzag across around there. They all come into a little knot at the bottom or a bead. Hanging down. And then from there, they go back to a central point. Maybe another bead. And then all the way up to here. How do they hang into the ceiling, actually? Does anybody show? Oh, a hook! I never would have known. <laughs> so this up here has to be a hook then. And then we'll have the macrame hanging off that hook. And slowly but surely, your drawing continues. I'm just going to sketch in some lines. Make sure I have that extra on the edges. Above the X, so I have to curve it up. I'm 
do some of that unicorn twisting action. I'd probably put the plant on a different layer just so that it's easier to erase out. Wow. One more piece to the puzzle. Woo. Phew. <laughs> it really just comes down to details to go from like this non-descriptive block to something that's a desk or a or a bookcase. You start being more appreciative that uh Furniture has all kinds of different facets and bases, pieces that stick out, pieces that get carved in. Ooh, look at that. Wow. Woo, not gonna have a fancy one like that, but maybe just a typical one like this that kind of matches the desk, has that yeah, same yeah, sort of. Yeah. Oh, but look at this crossbar. I never would have known to put something like that. The base is quite thick. I wouldn't have known that. Uh, whoops, don't want to buy it, Google. Just going to copy that. Go back over here. Paste. Again, it doesn't matter that it's the wrong angle because I'm just taking the principle of it, not necessarily the actual presentation of it in this angle. So let's get a new layer here. Okay. Get my grid for that little side paneling. It goes about halfway. And again, below the X, we're going to see that thickness. Above the X, we're going to see that thickness. If you feel like you need to put one here, it's going to be center than at the top or the bottom. Whoops, not there can't have both sides showing. Yeah. If that ever happens, it's because it's beveled. It's like at an angle. Whoops, I can't do an angle with this grid on. Let's say this one has, like most doors have like a beveled section where there's a diagonal line and like a panel that pops out. Yeah. We could do that and that'll make it look fancy. Oops, wrong corner, that corner. Then we've got that chunky base. So I have a decision to make. I can either add on or I can cut away and like shrink this one down. I think it'd be easier just to add though. So I'm gonna go ahead and add 
Ooh, already 610, so I'm going to do this quick and sketchy. Put on that base. Take a look at how these shelves don't go far out as the edge. Okay. Zoom in here. Like you can see where the shelf ends right there, and there's a little bit of thickness for this outside. So that means I gotta go back over here to my bookcase and give myself an edge. I'm gonna get that waffle grid back. There's the edge. Whoops, a little too close. There's the thickness so that my shelves will, whoops, take off that grid. I should say you can also do a grid for the diagonal because we know we have these snap grids that if I need the angle, that diagonal angle, then I can just grab it off of there. So like I said- It, it needs an S a side, an edge on the other side. Edge on the other side. Oh, yes. I see what you mean now. Like over here, it needs yes. one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So then our shelf goes in the middle between those two. It has a thickness, maybe a little thicker than that. It's got to hold up books. Because it's above the X, we're going to see underneath it. And then a book would be here, a book would be there. If it was down here, we're going to follow a little closer to that diagonal line down there. It's below the X, so we see the top of the shelf. We'd see the bottom of the book there, top of the book. Come back all the way down. You can see the inside of this empty shelf. Let's see what's up top. Nice big expanded. Ooh, nice big Beautiful. expansion. Yes, there's a thickness here too. So I'm going to erase out those parts. And just kind of see, well, it goes out a little bit, does a little curvy thing, goes up again. And then each of these corners has to follow the diagonal. A little curvy bit there. Oops. If I have a plant up here, it's above the X, so it'll have to curve up. Some rare exotic plant. <laughs> Take a look. Wow. Ooh. Stick in that rug. And you go, oh, it's a rug. Well, no, it's only two lines. You got to see what an office rug might look like. Get some ideas. Ooh, oh. hexagons. We've got really intricate patterns that I'm not going to do. Checkerboard. Stripes. I kind of like the hexagon pattern though. That's kind of neat. And I go, oh, but I don't know how hexagons are going to get squashed as they go back into space. Just make them more squashed as they go that way. They don't have to be exactly. If I start with some hexagons down here, they're probably going to be covered up before I even really get to see how they go back in space. Whoops, doesn't even match up right. Oh, well. There you go. Yeah, I'll just stick in some more there. Maybe it has an edge to it. Cool. What else do we have in our sketches? Oh, the cityscape in the back. That's easy. We just get our waffle type grid, stick in some buildings. Again, buildings, people will do the same shape over and over, which makes them look fake. So we try to vary it up or go look at a real city skyline. Over here, I can only do the straight lines and then I have to take off my grid 
kind of follow the edges I have. Hmm, what else, what else? 615, I think I can draw one more thing. Waste paper basket. <laughs> computer oh yeah the computer too let's get the computer something on her desk that's on her desk all right so my sketch is now kind of off from my look off from my regular drawing let's move that maybe a little like there so i'm going to follow my flat line actually you can get your waffle grid again it's on the same layer as the desk now okay Looking at my computer off to the side right now, it's not that tall. It's more like that, maybe. And I'm going to take that grid off so I can follow some of these diagonals. Try to make it short, go against that urge to make it go all the way along across the desk it's going to be too long we want foreshortening and that's not a computer that's just a box so yeah. normally i would either look at the back of my computer to see all the cords and Cables. I don't know how they hide this stuff in an office. Do they have like a thing covering it? A hole it? in a desk sometimes. Oh, so it might not even be up here. But we'll just say there's a bunch of ports back here. Yeah, in fact, be... I, I, to be honest with you, how could she have the computer and no screen? Yes, I was just thinking about that myself. The I'm screen a is the thing that would be on the desk. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the computer would be hidden. Just a reminder that in the middle of the desk, things are vertical. And then as they go out to the sides, they'll get closer and closer to these diagonals. So if my monitor is right here, this side might be straight, but this side would be a little bit tilted. And that's where it is on the desk. Goes up, we've got a monitor. Great overlapping happening. We can erase her out. Oh, it's bigger. Just color in the monitor and then you still have her. If you oh, want. that's right. You <laughs> could just color in the monitor and then you wouldn't have to go in and erase every single thing. And then you could move her and she, her elbow wouldn't be missing. Absolutely. See, you guys are getting more into. We've learned a few things. Amazing things of digital art. All the wires. <laughs> Keyboard, keyboard's probably over there somewhere. What else do we have? 618. Uh, let's just give her some folders or something, some paperwork. Again, who has the papers unless you're like really OCD? Exactly parallel right. to your desk. Or probably not. It's probably tilted. It's probably skewed a little bit. So all yeah. I'm looking at is trying to keep it the same squashiness let's call it this height of the desk that type of squashed feeling i want to try to replicate it there so i don't want to make something like this that's not yeah. squashed i don't want to make something like this that is so squashed that doesn't look like a piece of paper i'm just kind of taking this overall desk shape and trying to keep that same level of squashiness for this piece of paper or folder or whatever it is. You might have a pencil also not going to be perfectly parallel, but it's not going to be on its end unless it's in a cup. You can put it straight across, but that looks a little mechanical. So we might put a little tilt on it. Maybe the cup is right over here with all the other pens. Oops, that looks like a plant. One way to do it is you go from the bottom and then lean it against the edge. 
Now it doesn't look so much like a plant. Yeah. Yeah. Not bad for an hour of drawing, basically. Yeah. Yeah, the grids are huge for doing um, the furniture. Yeah, it makes it really simple when it's just straight up and down. And then all you have to worry is about a little a couple of diagonals. And even those have a grid if you want to mess with, uh, you know, repositioning it all the time for the diagonal that you need. If I was doing a serious piece, I would take the time to do it. But yeah, if you wanted it perfect, that would be the key. Yeah, that would definitely be the key. Oops. And I would probably look more at my line weights, making the thicker ones on things that are close. Keep that back part really skinny. This part bothers me. I want to put in that waste paper basket real quick. Because overlap, we want overlap to break up these sections. If I put my waste paper basket here, Right. It's just no not as effective as if it overlaps, but not make a tangent with that building, not make a tangent with that building. Somewhere there. And then it's just like, oh, we can breathe a little. Yeah, that makes a lot of difference. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. 